question number eight. Whoever liked to enlarge his sustenance. Hadith number 90, 991. Narrated Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. I heard Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, whoever desires an expansion in his sustenance and age should keep good relations with his kid and kin. So, this hadith indicates that it's not a sin to want to increase your sustenance, wallah. You, you find people saying, Akhi, why are you doing this? This job pays much more money than what you're getting. I get people coming to me, Sheikh, I was offered a job with 60% increase in the paycheck. But you know, because I don't want this dunya, I'm reluctant. I said, Akhi, take the job and give me the 60%. <laughs> it's no problem. Are you crazy? Is it, and people think that this is wrong. Is it wrong? How did Uthman do? May Allah be pleased with him. He did so much for Islam, for the Prophet ﷺ, until the Prophet said, Bakhin Bakh. Whoa. Nothing would harm Uthman after today. Let him do whatever he wishes. By doing what? Praying night prayer? By fasting voluntary? By pouring the money in the Prophet's lap, alayhi So when you're rich, you benefit the whole ummah. But when you're poor and you pray night prayer, you benefit yourself. So there is nothing wrong in gaining halal. If you look at the t ten heaven bound, you'll find six or seven of them millionaires. Not rich. We're talking about mansions and wealth. Yet when you see them, you cannot say, oh, he's wearing Prada shoes and carrying Louis Vuitton bags and wearing uh, uh, Versace and Gucci. And... No, 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 no. They're normal people. And whenever they were requested to give, they give because the dunya is not in their hearts. It's in their hands. So it's easily dispersed. But such people, Allah give them tens and tens and tens. One of the brothers was with one of the Rajihi family in Saudi. He's a multi, 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 multi millionaire. But his beard is like this, mashallah, and he does so many good charity works. He was talking to Sheikh uh, Al Mahesni with him. And Sheikh Mahesni is also one of the well known reciters of the Quran. So he was, they were told, telling him about real estate and, and things. He gave a huge area in Mecca. I mean huge, to build Masjid of Sheikh bin Baz. He did this. And it cost like 50 million, 100 million, something. So when people were asking him, he said, well, I don't know. Somebody asked me for a Masjid and they said that this is a good spot, so I gave it to the Masjid. Sheikh Muhammad, what happened? He said, oh, Sheikh, the following day we got 10 times folds the amount that we've spent. So you give, Allah gives you more. But you have to trust. Sustenance in Allah's hands. So don't think that dunya is bad. Acquiring it from haram or dubious met methods, this is bad. So the Prophet says, whoever likes that Allah increases his sustenance, his provision, and age. And we will come to this word, age, because... The Arabic word is يُنْسَأُ لَهُ فِي أَثَرِهِ And this has a different uh, interpretations. Then what to do? You should connect your kinship. Who are my kinship? What's the definition of my kinship? Blood relatives. Blood relatives. Anyone related to you from your father or your mother? These are what? Rahim. Kinship. So this, is, this means that my mother-in-law, my wife's mother, is not my kinship. My mother and my father are not my wife's kinship. So if my wife says, I don't want to meet them ever in my life, would she be sinful for severing kinship? No. And sometimes it's safer. 
I don't want to go into this. Seriously, it's safer when the relationship is toxic, especially the subcontinent. Again, I need bodyguards when I leave, <laughs> because I always you know, target the subcontinent people. I have done hundreds of counseling sessions. And when it comes to mother-in-law and daughter-in-law relationship, there is a big confusion. And one of the sisters, she's from Pakistan. And this is the last time I did it physically. Counseling sessions, I used to sit with them. That one was the last. The mother was like in her mid-40s. And the daughter-in-law was in her late teens, shivering in front of me. And the mother was shouting, and why? Well, she's not working, she sleeps late, she doesn't clean, she doesn't... I said, she's not a servant. It's good of her, she accepted to live with you. She's not your servant. Would you like someone to treat your daughter like this? She said, no. Okay, why do you like it to be for her? She said, when I was young, I was treated worse than this. I said, oh, masha Allah. <laughs> so this is a debt you wanted to be paid by her? Where is the logic? So kinship is any relationship to you from your father or mother's side, meaning paternal, maternal, uncles and aunts, and cousins, and cousins of cousins. But a third or fourth cousin is not like my brother. My brother, I call him every day. My first cousin, I call him once every two weeks. My second or third cousin, I may not call him, and I see him in Eid, or when I go back home, or in weddings, but the relationship is there. And I won't go into this. So this is connecting your kinship. Now, increasing your sustenance, how would that help? Ya akhi, rizq is in whose hands? You get people calling, Ya Sheikh Hasim, I lost my job for two, three years. I don't have a job. And I'm, I'm suffering. I make dua, Allah doesn't, this and that. And why is this happening? And they complain. I say, Ya akhi, if you know the name of Ar-Razzaq, provision is from Allah. So who is the Razzaq? Can anyone give you without Allah's permission? There's no way. So why is Allah not giving you? Is Allah poor? A'udhu Billah. Allah has <laughs> this whole universe in His hand. He gives it to whomever He wishes. Is Allah stingy? A'udhu Billah. This is kufr. Allah gives the kafir without him asking. Now you ask yourself, why isn't Allah giving me? Ya akhi, how many human beings living on earth today? Eight billion. In my hotel room, I'm on the 10th floor. I'm in a suite. I always live lavishly, but I'm not paying for it, so alhamdulillah. <laughs> I look, wallahi, from the window, and I see the whole of Kuwait. حولي اسم المنطقة whatever uh, and I see hundreds of thousands of people houses cars and I think ya Allah this one has debt this one has a rent to pay this one has children to pay their fees who thinks like this I can't I go, I go crazy who gives them Allah Azza wa Jal 8 billion inhabitants are provided with air with water, with food, with everything they want. Kafir and non-kafirs. The problem is how many hundreds of billions of fish that have the same thing. Hundreds of billions of animals, of birds, of insects, of viruses we don't know. The virus is not a human, it's, it's not a living creature. They say, I don't know. Bacteria, whatever. Who runs the whole show? Angels? La wallah. Everything is written. Your risk is written. Trust him. Your problem is you're impatient. I want it now. No. 18 years, Ayyub making dua to Allah to cure him. 18 years and he's a what? A prophet. The prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was cornered with his people for three years in Shi'ab uh, uh, Abu Talib in Mecca 
They're refusing to get anything of food or goods to him. And he is who? Rasulullah. So you want things today? So provision is in Allah's hands. Ar-Razzaq. And one of the meanings of Razzaq is not only provision. There is a higher meaning, which is knowledge. The best of, re of, of, of sustenance, of rizq, is knowledge of iman, of guidance. Nobody asks Allah when he says, Ya Razzaq, razuqni. Nobody looks at this. Because they don't know the names of Allah. They only know, rizq is, pay off my debts, pay my rent, give me money. That's it, alhamdulillah, food. But more noble, rizq is guidance, the purity of your heart, that Allah Azza wa Jal gives you knowledge. So, this is connecting your next of kin, what it does to your rizq. Now, what does, وَيُنْسَأُ يُنْسَأُ لَهُ فِي أَثَرِهِ how does Allah Azza wa Jal prolong or expand or increase your age? One meaning, as the scholar said, it, Allah gives you power in your body. Sometimes you look at people in their 70s and 80s. Wallahi there, mashallah, there is, yani, one of the salaf, he was over 60, and he was on a boat just before reaching the shore. He jumped and leaped. His students said, hey, hey, hey Sheikh, you, what is this? You're going to broke a, a bone or something. We are afraid for you. He said, these are limbs that we protected when we are young. And Allah will strengthen it and protect it when we are old. There are, there are people I know. So one meaning of is to be given physical Strength. Number two is to be given barakah in his life by guided to do good deeds, to occupy his time with whatever benefits him in the hereafter. This barakah is very important. Yeah, you, you go and see Sheikh Abdullah bin Jibreen. May Allah have mercy on his soul. Some say that he used to give 17 classes a day in different sciences and books before Fajr, after Fajr and then have Duha and before Dhuhr, after Dhuhr, after Asr, between Asr and Maghrib, after Maghrib, then between Maghrib and Isha and then after Isha and after Isha you have three, four hours different classes. This was his daily routine. The brothers come to me and say, Sheikh Asim, can you give us a class after Asr? So, no, 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 I have from 6.30 to 9.30. I cannot do this. I don't have time. My voice doesn't have, I'm too tired. I'm too... And then I consider myself a Sheikh. And the brother says, if you die, who shall we go to? Akhi, let me die first and go, go to any real scholar. We are not scholars. We are not real scholars of Islam like these people. Look at the material left by Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen. I have his book collection. I just sit there and watch him. Yeah, when? When did he make this? And when you study it, it's not something that is random and you correct. It is something that is laser focus. When you go to a Sharh al mumtir and it's, it talks about fiqh from A to Z. Where is he getting his knowledge? And this is not something he wrote. This was taken from cassettes and collected. Imagine if he were to write and then cross-check, mm, let me check. And if you go to even before Sheikh bin Uthameen, someone like Al-Imam al-Nawawi died less than 44 years of age. Never married. Look at the, the, the collection he left, the knowledge. Al-Majmu' Sharh Al-Muhadhab, for example. Rawdat Al-Talibin in Fiqh Al-Shafi'i. Riyad Al-Salihin, Al-Adhkar, blah, blah, blah. They calculated the amount of pages he used to write. And, and, and I think something like 30 or... Yeah, every day. Just writing. And we, we can't even write one full page a day. And my hand is tired. When you look at Sheikh Al-Islam bin Taymiyyah. This is crazy, man. 
one of the best aqida textbooks classical books is al aqida al tahawiya al aqida al wasitiya when did he write it after asr he said people come came to me from wasit and they said i want something about aqida blah 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 so i said okay dictate it bismillah rahman rahim da 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 da, da. yalla till date it's being taught in universities all major scholars have explained it and it's one of the best tools in replying to ashaira and the deviant sects gives you quran 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 you where is he getting this here dictation he's dictating he's not reading and the amount of ayat related to the uh, uh, sifat to the attributes of allah azza wa jalla crazy so this is baraka which we lack when you ask people why don't you do oh, i don't have time other people you find a lot of baraka in it this is why of the reason number 3 meaning that you have a good remembrance after your death so many scholars have died so many students of knowledge have gone but we mention only a handful and this handful is an indication insha allah that these were blessed in their lives and are may remembered and this is the legacy each one of us has to leave you die tomorrow what will happen another one bites the dust khalas you're dead but some of us know we will be remembered we remember a brother who was very active in the community who used to do so many things blah 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 brother arif may allah have mercy on him i, I remember i met him twice but he had a very special place very active in dawa very participating in everything this is what you want to leave behind you number 4 and this is the most authentic interpretation of the hadith and the choice of imam nawawi what does yunsa'u lahu fi athari how does allah prolong your age how does allah prolong your life because we know that our life span is already written fixed so the scholars say that this is conditional like saying if this individual would connect to his kinship then add his life span five more years so this is written but allah azza wa jalla of course has written if he's going to do it or not and some say that this is written to the angels because what's in the preserved tablet is finished your age is 65 خلاص to the angels in their annual destiny it might be written 5 uh, 60 years but with a possibility of being erased and increased into 65 because you called your uncle you you gave financial support to your aunt you helped your cousin and you have a good communication a uh, uh, circle with them all so this is the most authentic opinion and allah knows better